Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup of People's Dispatch where we bring you some of the top stories from across the globe. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Canada Day marked by protests as First Nations discover unmarked graves. Hidalgo becomes third state in Mexico to legalize elective abortions. Thousands protest Turkey's withdrawal from gender violence treaty. US troops withdraw from key Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan. And in our video section, we take a look at 100 years of the Communist Party of China. Thousands of people held protests across Canada on the country's founding day on July 1st. Annual celebrations held on the federal holiday were also cancelled in several cities. This followed the discoveries of over, of over 1,100 unmarked graves at the sites of indigenous residential schools. Between the 1870s and 1990s, over 150,000 indigenous children were forcibly removed from their communities. They were then held in residential schools with some having no contact with their families for years. They were banned from speaking their ancestral languages or maintaining cultural practices. Moreover, survivors' testimonies and records have revealed horrific levels of abuse and neglect. Till date, Canada's Truth and Reconciliation Commission has identified over 4,100 children who died in these schools. Listed, co listed causes of death included disease, malnourishment, accidents and suicide. According to the leader of the TRC, the number of children who went missing in these schools could be beyond 10,000. The Lower Kootenay Band announced the discovery of 182 unmarked graves on June 30th. Found at the site of St. Eugene's Mission School, the remains are believed to be of innocent children between 7 and 15 years of age. This followed just days after 751 graves were discovered in Saskatchewan and 215 in British Columbia. Vigils and rallies were held across cities including Toronto, Vancouver and Montreal on Thursday. People wore the colour orange to honour the victims of the residential school system. Protesters also toppled statues of the colonial British monarchs, cancelled Canada Day. Rallies were held in several places including Ottawa as thousands marched to Parliament Hill. People raised chants of no pride in genocide and bring them home. Activists have also highlighted the high levels of violence and marginalization that still affect indigenous people in Canada. Hidalgo has become the third state in Mexico to legalize elective abortions. The state Congress passed the legal termination of pregnancy bill on June 30th with 16 votes in favor and 14 abstentions. All legislators who voted to pass the bill belonged to the ruling Morena party. Celebrations were held outside the Congress building on Tuesday night as the ruling was announced. While Mexico only allows abortions in cases of rape, certain provisions do vary from state to state. Some states have legalized abortions in cases of fetal anomalies, non-consensual, non artificial insemination and financial hardship. Abortions in the state of Hidalgo will now be legal during the first 12 weeks of pregnancy. The state will also guarantee access to free abortion services in private health centers and women's prisons. However, people who choose to terminate their pregnancy after 12 weeks may be imprisoned for 6 months or a year. This procedure is also legal for up to 12 weeks on Me in Mexico City and Osaka. Given that abortions remain illegal in a majority of states, people are forced to travel outside. As per official data, over 71,000 women from across the country underwent abortions in Mexico City between 2007 and 2020. However, lockdowns enforced during the pandemic made access to abortion clinics much more difficult. As reported by Al Jazeera, only 5 out of the 13 clinics in Mexico City remained open. Lack of access forces people to undergo clandestine abortions in unsafe conditions. These can often lead to severe infections, injuries and even death. The law passed in Hidalgo has been welcomed by activists across Latin America who are fighting for safe abortion access. Protests were held across Turkey on July 1st as it officially withdrew from the Istanbul Convention. The International Treaty Against Gender-Based Violence was signed by 45 countries and the European Union in 2011. However, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, Erdogan annulled Turkey's ratification of the treaty on March 20, 2021. Conservatives claimed that the treaty was harming traditional family structures, expanding LGBTQ plus rights and approving same-sex marriages. However, the treaty contains only one reference to sexual orientation when it states that it must be applied to all without discrimination. Meanwhile, it does recognize that gender refers to socially constructed roles. The Istanbul Convention is a legally binding treaty which means that parties have to prevent, investigate and punish acts of violence. An appeal against Turkey's withdrawal was rejected by the Council of State on June 29th. 
Turkish Rights Group, We Will Fight Femicide, documented the murders of 300 women in 2020. Another 171 died under suspicious circumstances. At least 189 women have been killed so far in 2021. The perpetrators in most cases are husbands, relatives or even strangers. The group also introduced Law 6284 to prevent violence against women. However, the law includes the Istanbul Convention, leading to fears that it might now be weakened. Thursday's protests were called by the Women's Solidarity Committee and Communist Women and several opposition parties. Protests in Ankara took place amid heavy police presence and the use of tear gas against protesters was reported in several areas. As activists vow to continue their struggle, more protests have been planned for the weekend. US and NATO troops have left Afghanistan's Bagram Air Base after almost 20 years. A senior security official confirmed the news to Reuters on July 2nd. The air base located north of Kabul served as the center for US operations following the invasion in 2001. The withdrawal is part of a deal signed between the Trump administration and Taliban in 2020. At its peak, the Bagram Air Base hosted around 100,000 troops in 2011. However, the US has gradually reduced its presence with the official number now standing at around 2,500. The US will still leave behind around 650 troops stationed at its embassy in Kabul. Moreover, the military has said nothing of the approximately 1,000 undisclosed troops and special forces also present in the country. While the original deal hinged on the Taliban's non-cooperation with Al-Qaeda and ISIS, US troops are now withdrawing without conditions. The withdrawal has come at a time when fighting has intensified across Afghanistan. At least 28 civilians were killed and 290 were injured in the Kunduz province last week. Nearly 5,000 families have fled the region, had fled the region by June 27th, joining another 8,000 who had been previously displaced. According to the New York Times, 703 Afghan forces and 208 civilians were killed in the country in June 2021. Meanwhile, as per the UN, the Taliban has captured at least 50 of the country's 370 districts. The group also launched an attack in the central province of Ghazni earlier this week. As the fighting continues, the state has also deployed pro-government militias known as the Public Uprising Forces. And for our final story, we go to China, which has marked 100 years since the founding of the Communist Party. Celebrations were held on July 1st as President Xi Jinping addressed the country from Beijing's Tiananmen Square. With over seven decades in power, the CPC has achieved major socio-economic transformations. China has declared an end to absolute poverty and has become a moderately prosperous society. It has been able to effectively recover from the COVID-19 pandemic and its economy has reported positive growth. Here is a video feature on 100 years of the Communist Party of China.
And that is all we have for this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more such stories and videos, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.